Cheers, good morning. Welcome to the live stream. Um, let me know in the comments if you're here and say hello, please. Also, give me a thumbs up on these. I really appreciate that. That, as you all know, helps with the YouTube algorithms and all that stuff. And it uh, is great. I appreciate it, of course. Well, you guys got your guitar? Because we're going to go over this song today. Just kidding. Actually, love this song. study for triads, soloing. Again, okay, that'll be another topic if you want. joking. Love that song. Stairway to Heaven. If you like Stairway to Heaven, give me a thumbs up. Come on. Come on. I knew I know you like that song. Don't be shy. Wow, nobody likes Stairway to Heaven. Seriously. Oh, there we go. Thank you. Um, I mean, that's stuff I, I grew up listening to and playing. Well, Van Halen too and Joe Satriani and uh, Ingve Malmsteen, <laughs> crazy stuff. But now my heart is in jazz. Um, don't get me wrong, I love listening and going back to some of the classics and rock and 80s rock and stuff too. But um, I really find myself playing primarily. Oh, thanks for the thumbs up, you guys. Uh, I find myself playing mainly jazz, jazz standards, jazz classics, bossa nova. Um, it's just music that I kind of grew up with in my house, holding my parents listened to quite a bit of that. Um, so I'd hear a lot of the crooner stuff, Frank Sinatra. Now that's pretty much what I like to do. Um, even though, of course, I teach a lot of kids and teenagers and stuff like that. So I'm always teaching them Hendrix, Zeppelin, all the good stuff. Okay, so Beatles, of course. So, hey, thanks for joining in this morning. Hope you have your coffee and hope you have your guitar. I'm going to wait a few minutes to get started on this topic. Let you get your coffee or tea or whatever you prefer. Please say hi in the chat um, so I know you're here. If you're a Patreon member, you can mention that too. It'd be nice to know who my Patreon folks are because, well, I appreciate you for being on my online music community. Uh, this is a special month, um, September for me. Um, it's my birthday month, um, but it's also uh, my six-year anniversary on, on Patreon, which I started, I joined Patreon six years ago, uh, which is basically my online music community, especially during the pandemic times. That was really important for me on many levels. And uh, Bob, good morning. Um, hola. Wondering if you're back in Portland, Bob. Um, and it just, it kept me motivated to practice. I probably wouldn't, I don't know what I would have been doing if I didn't post on Patreon every day. Um, so it's been really amazing for me and to have the community and have folks like you uh, join my music community and they help support me as well. So I really appreciate that too, of course. Um, and allows me to do stuff like this, <laughs> uh, which is just, you know, sharing, sharing what I love to do um, uh, ever since I was a kid. Okay, so I'm going to talk today. Lately, I've been talking about tunes, like this week alone. I'm going to do this as much as I can. I'm not going to, I mean, pretty much it's always around this time, coffee time. I call it coffee and jazz, jazz and coffee. 
Um, but pretty much it's around this time. If you're wondering when, when my next one is, it'll probably be tomorrow morning, but I won't know exactly until that time. So I'm going to put too much pressure on myself. <laughs> Cheers. Mm. Thank you for the thumbs up again. Yeah. If you're joining in, that's always great. I'm trying to, um, get these out there, get the word out and stuff like that, you know? Um, so what am I talking about here? Just kind of this week, what I've been doing is a little bit of theory, some piano theory, some really basic stuff. I might even do that today. I'm going to, this is going to be an hour session just so you know. Um, and fretboard visualization, songs, memorizing, it's all related. Okay. I know some of you might say, oh yeah, Tracy goes off on some tangents. Tracy's, I call it Tracy's tangents. And that's true. Um, but you're going to find as you watch my videos and everything that I do, it's, it's all connected. So um, the only thing I probably won't talk about are my cats. Um, okay, so um, are we ready to get started? If you have any, if you want to type in the chat, say good morning, hello, good afternoon, wherever you're located. It's always nice to see comments. And I appreciate it. Um, I'm in Portland. Portland, Oregon, USA, and I've got this Thin Line Ibanez guitar. And I plug it in and I play it, but today it's just a super quiet. Hopefully you hear it okay. Girl from Ipanema, key of C. You guys practice it? Too dominant. This is from yesterday. Two minor, flat two, tritone seven, and one. One. Just go through it once with me, see if you can hang. Two dominant, I'll yell it out. The technique. And that's your A section. Pretty easy. Okay, now remember, it goes up a half step. And then it goes to the four dominant. So if you know this, okay, that's the four. And that's again my lesson on Louie Louie. Know where one, four, five is. Okay, so one, we're in the new key, D flat major. If you want to know the letter name, four. Back to the D flat, but now it's minor. And then we got to go to the flat six. And I'm now thinking about where, where from here, I'll walk you through this, where this minor, where's the flat six? Well, here's the five. Remember the importance of Louis Louis, this, here's flat six. Okay. And then it goes up a half step, which is now actually the real two of the key of C that we started with. And that's how I think of it. And then the flat six from that, bluesy. This two. See what I'm saying? It's a great progression right there. You can write a song just with that. Actually, if you guys know Beck, he wrote it. And see, there's my tangent. If you know Beck, he wrote a song called Tropicalia from his Mutations record. It goes like this. I know that song, Tropicali at Beck. His influence was Bossa Nova. I mean, he's just basically using Jobim progressions. We're at a great tune. Okay, so I, I went on a tangent, like I said I would, just for you. Uh, D minor, B flat. Okay, now we're going to the three. But each day that she walks through the sea, tritone, or not tritone, uh, two five, and then two five, or three six, two five, rather, like this. I don't know the specs on this guitar um, name. I bought a use. And top. One more time with me. See if you can hang key of C. It's just a pickup from where we left off yesterday as a warm up. Thank you for the thumbs up, you guys. Two, flat two, and ready. I'll slow down. 
for the B section. Up a half step. Four dominant. We're just getting warmed up, you guys. Um, turn that to minor. Flat six. This is all about intervals. Up half step, which is the real two of the key we're in. Flat six. So you just get the bass lines. But each day. Last day. See, it's not that hard. Memorize intervals. Progression. Cheers. Good morning, folks. If you're just tuning in, I'm just kind of getting us warmed up a little bit, getting our fingers and mind warmed up. Little girl from Ipanema, just picking up where I left off yesterday with my live chats. But kind of everything is all connected, is what I'm saying. You know, intervals, playing the songs, all that stuff. So, um, in case you're wondering how how this is all related, <laughs> it, it does relate. And today I'm going to talk about um, a little bit more of a different topic. Well, it's still, again, fretboard visualization. And yes, I'll probably still refer back to Louis Louis, which is an important, what I posted the other day, the importance of Louis Louis. I know many of you are probably like, what? Why is Tracy teaching Louis Louis? But it's really about intervals, one, four, five. And that's uh, what we're going to talk about today on the guitar as we dive into this topic of fretboard visualization. If you're just tuning in, thanks for joining in today's uh, guitar, kind of a fretboard visual visualization shop talk. And I did grab this guitar today because this one does have dots. The one that I used the other day doesn't have dots. So that way you know where I'm at, okay? So make sure you grab your guitar. These uh, little morning guitar sessions here. Uh, sometimes I'll do piano too. I'm starting to do some piano theory stuff um, and relating it to the piano so you might um, want to be sitting at your keyboard or something too as we work through stuff especially for those who are like i don't know how to play piano well i'm going to teach you but it's going to be from a guitar point of view um so definitely tune in for that okay let's get started you guys hopefully you're all in tune hopefully i'm in tune this does have an onboard tune maybe i should do that that way you guys can tune with me let's see if this tuner has patterns uh, type in the chat if you're here and watching and enjoy these morning sessions with me. I'm going to do these um, as much as I can. Which may be every day, forever. If you're on Patreon, you know I post every day. And I've been doing that for over three years. I, I'm, I'm guessing I may be the only Patreon creator that's been posting every single day for three years. I haven't received any uh, award yet, but I'm hoping they'll send me some sort of award. Or hopefully I'll get some more patrons from this. Or maybe a trophy or something. I don't know. Just something. Starbucks gift card. <laughs> oh, okay, I won't start playing another song here. Good morning, John. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah, I'll say your name and if you and give me a thumbs up too if you're joining in. I appreciate it and uh love seeing your your names on there. Um okay, so let's see. We're gonna hopefully you're tuned up. I'm kind of in tune. It's, they say it's good enough for jazz, and so that's usually pretty good um, for me since we are kind of playing jazz today. Um, oh, I just looked at my picture. <laughs> That's a pretty bad picture that they just took of me uh, on YouTube for my screen. <laughs> All right, the coffee's starting to kick in. Good. Here we go, guys. I hope you know your notes on the sixth string and fifth string. Okay. Joe Mama, piano approach. I'm going to talk more about that for sure. Triads, all that good stuff. We'll get into that and uh, learning songs too. Um, so definitely check out that. Um, I mean, I did take piano lessons, of course, but um, you know, I'm a guitar player you know, first and foremost. So I do visualize things on the guitar and the piano. And it works both ways. I've learned so much on the piano that I've applied to the guitar. 
Okay, so here's a, just a prerequisite, I guess, to, to do a lot of this stuff. You gotta know your notes on the sixth and fifth string. Uh, knowing your notes on the four, three, two, one string, this exercise is gonna help you. So I'm gonna take it really slow. So grab your guitar if you don't already have it. This, these are sessions where we're playing together, practice sessions, essentially. And um, they're all one, they're gonna be just one hour sessions as I do this. I'm gonna be hitting various topics and various songs, and theory and guitar playing, whatnot. Ready? What note is that? Type it in. What note is that? <laughs> you don't have to type it in. That's a G. Okay, again, I just want to see if anybody would type it in. Um, so that's a G note, right? Third fret. Hopefully you can see pretty good. I'm trying to get in pretty close. I don't want to get in too close. But, um, so G. And here's here's something I want to talk about just right away. If you don't know your notes on the six, on the um, if you don't know your notes on the rest of the fretboard, if you don't already know this, this is such an important topic. Octaves. Just to know, do this. So really, you have G to G here. It's 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 a lot of again. I call it fretboard visualization. It's intervals. G to G is here. It's two frets over, two strings down because we're tuned in standard tuning, okay? As you know that, we're tuned in fourths, except for these two strings, which are tuned in thirds, so the third and second string. So this is G to G, this is G to G. And that's because what I just said, the fourth to the th second string here, the third to second is ma a major third, so that screws up our two fret pattern, okay? That's very important. Just do this with me octaves, G to G. And then put this finger, here and go G to G. Okay, so that way you can quickly learn your notes and identify them if you don't know them. Go through that method. Let's start on F. Here's F. Here's F. Here's F. Put that finger here and here's F. Okay, of course there's F here, but we don't need to worry about that. Uh, let's do B flat. Here's B flat. Here's F. Okay, so get the octave, put that finger. Okay, now that helps you find your other notes quickly. Let's do another one, uh, C sharp, ninth. Oh, by the way, again, this is what I'm saying. If I say C sharp, you gotta be thinking nine. I'm talking about, we're starting on the sixth string right now. I'm gonna quiz you all, and then do this. Now you can find your notes quickly. That's very important. Okay, so, and this is one thing that I do with all my students at the earlier stages, especially um, bass students too. Is I, I'll say notes and they play it or they say it, you know, just it's visualizing your fretboard and knowing your notes. Uh, I, I usually stay, I usually say stay on one string at first. Play songs, Autumn Leaves, Blue Bossa, Minor Swing, whatever songs that you're working on or enjoy, just be a bass player. I always say that. So let me name out some notes and you say the number. Ready? Don't worry, uh, only you're going to hear your answer. So just belt it out. F sharp, hopefully you said two. Okay, so let me talk about this game again. We're playing a morning theory game right now. F sharp is here, second fret. The game is, I say a note of the 12 notes, and I might say G flat, which is also F sharp. You're gonna say two. You can say a 14, but I'm just gonna stay within zero to 12. That's a chromatic scale. That's how many notes we're dealing with before it repeats, okay? And that's, I'm adding more rules to the game. B flat, you say six. And yeah, you can play it or you can do it. Ready? Okay, you gotta be honest with yourself. How well do you know your notes? This is so important. A flat, four, which is also G sharp. Okay, D, 10, play it or say it. G, that's probably the first one you should know, C. Eight. G is three, by the way. Thanks, Abe. Abe's playing the game with me on typing it in. I would give you guys prizes, but probably cost too much in shipping. I, if I could put a little star by it, I, let me make, can I do that? No. <laughs> I can't give you guys trophies or anything. Great. Yeah. Joe, Joe Mama, intervals. Okay. Yeah. No prizes. Thank you. How about a thumbs up? Let's give everybody a thumbs up if, you, if you're enjoying this morning game. All right. Let's, let's do a flash round here. Ready? F sharp two. 
say the number with me right after I say it. See if you can match my voice. B, seven. E flat, 11. A flat, four. We're getting through all of them. A, five. C sharp, nine. D sharp, 11, which is also E flat. E, zero or 12. How are you guys doing? Hopefully you know your notes on the sixth string. This is kind of a, a, a prerequisite, meaning we have to know this. This is a morning theory stuff, like I mentioned, this drills. <clears throat> what I'm kind of excited about is when we get to the point, so many of my private students know this, I'm gonna talk about modes pretty soon here too. And I'll say, G Aeolian, what Phrygian? And you're gonna be thinking and connecting these, okay. Fun stuff, I think of my old music theory teacher, Gregory Short, who passed away. He was an awesome guy, awesome teacher, very influential in music school. Um, okay, notes on the fifth string, ready? We'll just do this quickly, then we'll head into this fretboard visual visualization, but this is already part of visualization because you gotta know your notes. If you're just tuning in, welcome. Give me a thumbs up, appreciate it. Say hello in your chat, whatever. Grab your coffee and your guitar. Ready, notes on the fifth string, C. Three, E, seven, F sharp, nine. Okay, play it with me. And if I'm going too fast, please tell me in the chat. I'm just, again, quizzing you on what I would want you to be able to do if we were sitting here together in the same room. I want to be able to say E flat, B flat, C sharp. Uh, let's see, how about F sharp? I might have said F sharp, that's nine. By the way, I'm sorry, I'm going to get a little bit closer so you can see my dots. I grab this guitar just so you can see the dots too. Um, we're talking about notes. Learn your notes on the sixth and the fifth string. And then we could do this diagonal method that I'm talking about E flat and the octave E flat, E flat. So remember the two fret and the two string. Got to go over two frets, over meaning up from six to eight, and then go over two strings. And just do this method. Just find your octave quickly. A flat, here's A flat. Uh, F sharp, F sharp, F sharp, F sharp. You're gonna find how very important this is C. Let's start here. C, C, C. One more, one more here. E flat. If you don't have a cutaway, you might not be able to access that high note. All right, guys. So, hey, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for the thumbs up um, on this lesson today. We're doing fretboard visualization. We're starting just knowing and practicing drilling the notes on the sixth string, you'll get it quicker. Then you look at tunes, you know, take some, take a tune, I always take this one. G, C, F sharp, B, E. The falling leaves drift by my window, the falling leaves, red and gold. I see your lips, A, D, G, C, F sharp, B, and E. Sharp, since you went away, and do songs like that. Then do it on the on the fifth string. And I know many of you have studied with me either online or privately. You know this exercise. Uh, since you went away, days will be long. E, but soon I'll hear A, D, G. Old winter song. C, but I miss you. F sharp, B. Most of all, my darling. Chromatic. D, E flat, D, D flat. When autumn leaves start to E. Oh, okay. That's just a good exercise. And again, this is kind of different. This is what's interesting. The other day when I taught Autumn Lee's, some of you are here with me, I hope, or watched that lesson. It's a good lesson. I was talking about Roman numerals, memorizing songs. But now I'm just talking about being able to read a lead sheet quickly on the fly, knowing your notes on the sixth and fifth string. And then, of course, you put the shapes. And, you know, fifth, the fifth and sixth strings are the most important strings you know on the guitar and now today what i'm showing you is how to take that and learn your notes in the middle of the fretboard by using the octave system g to g g g this is what i call diagonal see because we're going this way diagonal g to g g to g a to a just get quick at this exercise you know just grab three notes three um three notes essentially two octaves 
Dave, Mr. Peasley, good morning. Thanks for joining in. Appreciate it. Good to see you. Um, all right, so let's do this. Grab your guitar. If you don't already have it, you got to do this. I mean, it's not just a watch video, drink coffee, and watch Tracy. This is, you know, this is a session here, a serious practice session. Very serious, very serious stuff. Top secret. And I appreciate you all being here, having coffee with me, playing guitar, going through this fretboard stuff. Um, all this materials and bonus lessons, I don't have to say it, you know, it, it's already all on Patreon. Um, but this is, these are special sessions here where I'm kind of diving into specific topics that I personally use quite a bit. I want to show you stuff that I don't use. Uh, that I find there's, well, I, I think it's all important, but I find, <laughs> I find it's most important to share knowledge and, and things that I've experienced over my, my many years of playing. Mm -hmm. I know many of you have been playing for many years too. So um, hopefully I can open up some new concepts for you. Okay, here we go. Here's the next concept. Ready for this? We're going to get, and this is pr pretty much the, the meat of it today. We're going to do the root fifth method. Root fifth. So if we're on G, and again, yes, this ties back to this. See, root one, four, five. Now you know why I'm talking about the importance of Louie Louie. So important to know your intervals on the guitar. Root fifth, G to D. Root fifth, G to D. Root fifth, G to D. Let's just all enjoy that for a moment. And that's also, if you played it as a chord, type it in. What's that called? Root fifth. I'm going to wait until I see the two words I want to see with a couple of exclamation marks. Come on, don't make me type it. Seriously, don't make me type it. Yes. Oh, I didn't do two exclamation marks, that's okay. Power chords, so powerful. You can feel the power right now. Um, root fifth, or root fifth is so important. It's just, it's, can't say it enough how important it is on, on the guitar, but you can see why again, knowing your intervals, root fifth, root fifth, root fifth. This is just G to D. Please do that with me, G to D. But notice it's also called a power chord. If we were to play it like this, here it is here, here it is here. So I'm hoping you can do that now just from doing this octave thing we started with. And now I'm saying add the fifth on. If you don't remember, where's my fifth? Just do Louie Louie. One, four, five. Now you know root fifth, root fifth, root fifth. Do this everywhere, root A. Ready? I'll go slow, A. Okay. Seven shots of espresso, I can in, slow down. B flat, come on, root fifth. Do that slower. Root, fifth. Now the octave, B flat. Root, fifth. You got to move your hand. I, you could use your pinky, but then you wouldn't get the fifth unless you have 10 fingers. Root, F. Sorry, I got to say no, F. Follow me. Root, fifth. Power chord it. F. F. Power chord. And the other note, what's the fifth of F? The fifth of F is C. And this is a great way to visualize the fretboard. F C. F C. F C. So again, you know, now I'm saying know your notes, but also learn the fifth of the chords. So basically, if I said G, you would say D. Ready? Another quiz here, theory quiz. B flat, you say F. A, you say E. What's the fifth degree? This is important. This will also help you. I'm not going to go to the whiteboard today, but the circle of fifth. C, G, D, A, E, B, F sharp, you know, continue or fourths, backwards, C, F, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat. Have that circle of fifths printed in your mind or on the wall or wherever on your on your screensaver, the circle of fifths. Memorize these, the, that, okay? I mean, but really what I'm showing you right now is fretboard visualization. I think it's important for you to know the notes and be able to say it, but ultimately we want to just play it. Let me give you another quiz regarding fifths. I say the note, 
the root note, you say the fifth, A flat, and you say E flat, but do it on your instrument too, that will help you, because you might have to go oh, A flat, E flat, okay. F sharp, you say C sharp. If you said D flat, that's not incorrect, it's the same note as C sharp, it's just theory-wise on spelling on the paper, F sharp and C sharp are, is a perfect fifth, so it's just getting ultra technical. Music school. Spelling, they call it. All right, so now let's do this exercise again. We're on G. We're going to stick with G. Easy. Rufith, Rufith, Rufith. Okay, how you guys doing? Good, I hope. If you're just tuning in, uh, good morning. Get your coffee, get your guitar. Uh, give me a thumbs up. Appreciate it. <laughs> um, Rufith. Get fast at this. It's a great exercise. C. Hold it as a chord if you want. Root, root fifth. Um, again, this helps help this helps you memorize a fretboard really quickly. That's all I can say. But I'm gonna dive into some really fun things here that you're gonna enjoy if, if you when you re when you replay this video, if you're just tuning in. Yes, I did start with Stair Read Heaven um, earlier today. Uh, it's too much fun. So this, what we're going to do now relates to that because it's going to be the pentatonic scale. So G, D, G, D, G, and D. Okay. I'm doing something here that I think is very important. If you didn't notice, I'm going to do it again and type in the chat what you are seeing me do or how I play this root fifth that's different from how I demonstrated before. Okay. I'm not going to say it, but type in the chat. What am I doing? Go backwards, too. That's harder. Yes, thanks, Dave. Phone home. I'm using one finger. Specifically for this, my pointer index finger. So do that with your, let's, let's see, major, how about a minor key? I kind of want to do major, but you don't have to blaze through it, but it's just, it is good to, good idea to get fast at that root fifth. Ready on A. there's no third okay so it's kind of a cool exercise i'm going to show you a cool i'm going to show you a few cool licks so hang with me i'm just walking you through this concept okay if you're wondering where's where's this going it's kind of licks and soloing ideas and fretboard visualization it's extremely valuable um so yeah if you're just tuning in give me a thumbs up if you like this lesson i appreciate it i'm sorry i keep saying that but um it does help me quite a bit so they say <laughs> um all right, so we've mastered this root fifth, root fifth, root fifth, and you kind of know your notes there, I hope, thinking about this on any note. It doesn't, you don't have to blaze through it. That's not the, the root, that's not the reward of it, okay? Root fifth, root fifth, root, thanks for the thumbs up. Okay, now, now here's really, this is pretty, this is getting us to, to one thing that you're definitely going to be applying this concept right away if you, if this, you might already do this, but you might not know it so um and we're gonna add in a whole step above the root fifth and you get this root two five six we're playing it with intervals now i'm gonna stop i won't go through all three octaves yet root two 
I'll say numbers. One, two. We're playing numbers today. G to A. Don't think letters. <laughs> D to E. I mean, I'll, I'll say it like that because it, it'll take you longer versus just singing intervals. One, five, one, five. There's one, five. And then we add on using the, the first finger of index for the root fifth. Now we're adding on the two and the six. Beautiful. Like a sus. It's a, if you're wondering, that's a cool sound. I love this sound. This. What is that sound? One, two, four, five. Go back, and this again ties into my other lesson on Sunday. This ties in. Oh, is someone going to type it in? Power chords are ambiguous. Exactly. Yeah. Joe Mama, one, five root fifth, they're very ambiguous, as I mentioned the other day on that piano lesson. Please watch it. We'll do it on the guitar, but you can see it a little bit easier on the piano with a lot of these lessons. Uh, hey, good morning, Ben. Thank you so much. A power chord, root fifth, is neither major nor minor. That's the beauty of it, the ambiguity of it. I have to give myself a starting note. Uh, uh. You know, the, the singer, the band, the lead solo could be playing a major third or minor third, and the power chord doesn't care. It's just doing the same thing. So you're kind of always safe. Root fifth, root fifth. The root fifth is it's a beautiful approach, if you're wondering. Um, if you're just tuning in, thanks for thanks for tuning in, guys. And wow, thanks for the thumbs up. Appreciate that as well. Um, grab your coffee or tea or beverage of choice. I, and of course, grab your guitar. These are sessions where I'm walking you very slowly, I hope, and carefully through these concepts. Basically, uh, like a private lesson, as if we we're hanging out together. Some of my favorite concepts, and I'm trying to connect it all for you in many levels, uh, in many, in any style for that matter. So we're talking about power chords and um, root fifth, but now we're adding in the two and the four, and I'm actually still waiting to see somebody tell me what it, what chord would that create. One, two, four, five. One, two, four, five. This. See how easy it is to visualize? I just said add a whole step above the one, five, which is this. Now we're adding a whole step above. Thanks, guys. Yeah, some sus. Exactly. But specifically, what kind of sus? Because we know it's not major, we know it's not minor. It's a sus two. Here's our two, and it's a oh, sorry, sus two with a six degree. Okay, that's very important. So is it, or or we could think of it as a different way. D. <laughs> okay, now I'm getting myself in trouble. If you started on D, it'd be D, E, G, A, and that could be. I'm now I'm talking about. How can you apply it to certain chords? D, E, G, A. Now I'm starting on the fifth degree. This is where it gets a little tricky because now we have a two and this is a four and a five. So it could be a D sus four sus two. D sus two sus four if you wanted to play a chord. And if we were to, I have to think about this now. If we had to play this chord um, otherwise, you might do this. Let's see. You gotta get the D, the A, the G, and the E. So it's neither major. Here's that third. Minor. So really cool stuff for songwriting, okay? But again, that's not where I'm going with this right now. So let's do this exercise. I just wanna kinda of have you think in terms of like, what chord would these be? Because we're gonna talk about creating chords with arpeggios in a second here. So we got it. we're starting on G here. Okay, if you're just tuning, grab your guitar. Got to grab your guitar and do this with me. You're going to love this. I promise. This is going to open up many ideas. G, D, or G? G, D is where we started with. You guys are probably saying, okay, I've got that down. Where am I going with it? G, A, D, E. If you're wondering, I'm just using alternate picking. That means down up. I'm not really looking to look out of it. If you want to hammer, pull off. You can tap it, it doesn't matter. Do whatever you want. This. Now I'm doing all downstrokes with some palm muting. Okay, so 
Now, the fun stuff, ready? We're gonna add one more note and that's the third. And notice I like to slide it up, but sometimes I don't always slide it if you're wondering. So that's the three. And right now we're gonna do the major three. Okay, what scale is this? You all know that scale. Okay, I hope you know that scale. But you may not have done it this diagonal method. Okay, I know some of you are typing it in. This is the major pentatonic scale. One, two, three, five, six. One, two, three, five, six. One, two, three, five, six. But notice how I'm teaching it to you starting with this diagonal visualization one five one five one five and then i said okay add the two on and then the six which is a, ultimately a part of the pentatonic scale the major or now add on the three so the formula is one two three five six one two three five six one two three five six so again, you gotta know your intervals. One, two, three, five, six. You know, the, the numbers. And we're gonna do some drilling tomorrow on intervals or the next day, every day. Just these little short drills at the beginning of these sessions. Okay, to get you thinking and playing. One, two, three, five, six. One, two, three, five, six. One, two, three, five, six. And how I'm doing it right now is this. This is my favorite way. I call this a sliding scale. If you see in my worksheets. And so what I'm doing here is I'm going just two fingers. I'm using these two fingers. You could do all the jank if you want. One, three, slide. So I take that and then do the fifth and five and six with these two fingers. That way we still are visualizing this. But now I'm just adding in this third. And then Descending, I'm doing the exact opposite, or same thing, backwards, rather. Slide. 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 So here it is, up and down, the pentatonic scale, G major. Ready? F. One, two, three, four. Uh, A flat, three, four. Thanks, mess that up. <laughs> so again, the, the the trick of it is to do this root fifth root, fifth, root, fifth. That's the trick of it. Okay, if you're wondering, what's the diagonal method about? It's about learning your notes in a diagonal format so that you can memorize the fretboard really quickly versus just versus staying in one position. That's the A flat major pentatonic. But this method gets you all over the fretboard and it allows you to play the same type of licks. Let's go back to G here if you're just tuning in. So here's Root. Hey, thanks, New Life with Guitar. That's me again. Yeah, I'm knocking out on the park. Home run. If I do that here, do it down here. Do it down here. So this kind of method allows you to play three octaves. This is how it relates to the piano. When when we when you when you watch some of my piano lessons, you know, I'm gonna kind of demonstrate some similar concepts. Is that you know you learn one area essentially and then you move it around to some different octaves. This is G major penta, but the method again is root fifth. So listen to this little melody. Do it down here. Do it down here. Be able to play these melodies in different 
octaves very, very quickly. Great for soloing. Then you do it here. Down here. Just have fun with pentatonics if you're wondering, making up a progression. Go for it. <laughs> Diatonic progressions, you could do, um, you know, some gospel style things with secondary dominance, two fives, whatever, it doesn't matter. You can start to jazz it up, as I'm saying. When I'm playing autumn leaves, back to. major pentatonic. This is a theory stuff again I'm talking about. Uh, G major penta is equivalent to what minor? I'm quizzing you. This is stuff I want you to know. G major penta equals what minor penta? What's a relative minor? And the, if you don't know it, I'm going to do this for you. Three frets. Major is always up. Minor's always down. Three frets. That's a trick. You could think up to the six, but I think it's going down from the eight to the six, three fret. Remember the three fret trick, the three fret hack, whatever you want to say. Major's up, minor's sad, minor's down. So if we're in the key of G major or E minor, go back to my autumn leaves lesson that I did on Monday for the live stream. This is all available just on YouTube in case you don't want to join me on Patreon and won't be too sad about it. Um, but it'd be great to have you on Patreon. G major, E minor, same thing. So if I'm, we're playing a song like Autumn Leaves, for example, key E minor or G major, I could solo using the pentatonic. We love that penta. Get really bluesy, soulful, rock. Hey, thanks guys, yeah. Uh, great, I appreciate all the nice comments. Um, and I'm glad you all are enjoying this. And I know that not all of you can join Patreon and don't want to use your credit card. What all that stuff. So I appreciate, you know, you joining me here. That's really nice. Um, if you do want like my PDFs and my bonus lessons and all that stuff and the, be a part of the community, um, that's also great to be on Patreon. So I really thank you for that too. Because I know many of you who are watching are watching it from Patreon. So again, what I'm talking about now is pentatonics. I'm just on a little tangent, but I'm showing you how this diagonal method is just brilliant for the guitar. It allows you to play three octaves really quickly and play a lot of music as I'm demonstrating. Of course, you can play some classic rock. You know, any, any whatever, you play it to whatever music you want. Uh, the blues, let's see. Same scale. This. And I know many of you probably have played that pentatonic scale thousands of millions of times. But again, think of it like that. The root, fifth, root, fifth, root, fifth. Because I'm going to challenge you in about uh, one minute here, <laughs> doing some arpeggios. So again, uh, think about that. Okay, we're going to get challenged. Grab your coffee. I'm ready for the challenge. We got about 15 minutes left. If you're just tuning in, thanks for tuning in this morning. These are my live streams for the month of September. I'm trying to just run an experiment, basically see how many thumbs up I can get. Trying to trying to um, get to you know my birthday which is 27 so uh on the live streams this would be amazing um so thanks again for tuning in today we're talking about some one of my favorite topics for teaching for soloing especially 
and that's uh, the diagonal method if you don't know what what that is R root fifth root fifth root fifth it's really just taking diagonally through three octaves on the guitar this is how I personally like to think of the guitar and many levels just so I can get from low to high pretty quickly, play one idea up one octave, move it down to different octaves. It's kind of a trick. You probably don't realize how much of your favorite solos that soloists that you're hearing are doing kind of this moving around octaves, you know, same similar licks um, just to get more, more out of it. More of it. Sometimes I like to play low. I like to stay down here low. Um, I won't even go up to the next range for a while. See, I'm creeping up. It's hopefully building up intensity. Now I'm going up higher. Now I'm going higher. Don't ask me what progression I'm going. Just super easy, two, one. <laughs> Just almost a la Santana, you know this. A samba Patti style. Two chords. I love two chords. Beautiful. But again, what I'm demonstrating is how to maybe, you know, soloing wise, how to pace yourself. Don't just go blaze, you know, we're doing that this morning, blazing through. This is a great way to build a solo, okay? Stay in one octave, do your licks. Do da 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 Do da 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 Do da 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 And then slowly build it up, same licks. Do da 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 I'm doing a three six two five two five three six and again there there now I'm going through the whole fretboard just to demonstrate this concept. Good morning, Sal. Good morning, Ben. Thanks for joining in, you guys. Uh, please say hello in the chat. It's always nice to see different names on there. I appreciate it. I uh, appreciate the thumbs up. Um, let's continue on now. Now I'm going to kind of challenge you just a little bit further here. Uh, this is a really cool scale. Um, I, I, kinda, I don't know if there's a technical name like there is for the major penta. Oh, now check it out. Now I'm doing this. Different fingering. You know, you're going to come up with your own fingerings, I hope. This... It's a big stretch. One, two, three, five, six. One, two, three, five, six. Notice how I'm breaking up in octaves. One, two, three, five, six. Notice my finger really visualizing. I'll show you this demonstration. The finger, the first finger, as Dave said. The index finger, watch this. One, two, three, watch my index finger. See how it gets there, the fifth. See how it helps me. Visualize. You got to do that. I always say that's the preliminary exercise. Do that on any note, any chord. Root fifth, root fifth, root fifth. I'm starting on the sixth string. You can start on the fifth string too. Just as good practice to get through all six strings for this concept. Okay, so now here's a really cool scale. It's and I. It's from Sweet Georgia Brown. If you all know this tune, right here. It's a it's a it's a major pentatonic with a flat three. So now it's a minor. It's, I call it a minor six pentatonic because we got one two flat three, not minor pentatonic. That would just be this. That goes. You know, I won't, don't worry, I won't play Stairway to Heaven solo again. But that's your traditional minor pentatonic shape. Then check this out with the diagonal method. This is here's the formula: one two flat three. Gotta know your intervals. Don't worry, I'll go back to that. We'll do some interval training in the next couple days. Five, six. Let's talk numbers again. You can write this down if you want, but I want you to play it. One, two, three. One, two, flat three. Okay. So you know it's a minor type of a scale. Get the flat three. Could be diminished too, but 
but we also have the five and the six. So that's why this pentatonic scale is like a minor six, nine. Listen to it as a chord, minor six, nine, epic. Listen to the scale that would go with it. Play, play this stuff as chords. This is what I mentioned earlier. What chord do you get? I'm always thinking about the harmony of it. You know, the, that, the harmony, that's that's what you achieve because scales and chords go together. And in this case, is this a scale or is it an arpeggio? It's kind of almost both, but you have this one, two, flat, three, five, six. One, two, flat, three, five, six. One, two, flat, three, five, six. And you, you'll get fast at this because you've done this method root fifth, root fifth, root fifth method. Now we're just adding on different intervals. Okay, we're gonna spend a few minutes going through some of my other favorite ones. One, two, flat three, five, six. One, two, flat three, five, six. One, two, flat three, five, six. You can do this if you're in this gypsy chest. Pretty cool, pretty cool lick. Just that, I'm gonna say lick, but it's just a beautiful. And it also works great on a dominant chord. C7. C13, whatever, C dominant, C9, G, you're going to discover G minor and C7. You can interchange your ideas, so you get a lot of value out of these. But also, later on, you'll all say, oh, can I play that on a B flat major chord so I get this sound? A Lydian flavor? Absolutely. So I don't want to get too heady right now, but again, Baby steps. I know that on Patreon, a lot of folks are asking, where do I start in private lessons? Where is a good place to start? Right here. Learning your notes on the sixth and the fifth string. Learning your intervals. And then already we can make some pretty amazing sounds just from knowing that as I'm demonstrating, adding on one note, two notes, you know, we get these uh, cool scales. Starting with the, something you already know the pentatonic major. Now I say minor third. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, so I'm gonna do some arpeggiating here with you now. This now we're kind of I'm, I'm talking about, and we could do some other modes and all that stuff, but I won't I won't go into that. Let's just do some easy arpeggios. Well, I better not use that term easy arpeggios. If you're just tuning in, give me a thumbs up so I know you're here. Um, I think everyone who's been here already has given me a thumbs up, so that's great. I appreciate it. Um, type in your name or type in your chat. Hello, so I know who you are. Say hi. Time's running out, but I'm going to go over time today. <laughs> that's too much fun, this diagonal method. Okay, so now um, I'm going to take you through a few arpeggios, okay, using this, this diagonal method. This is all available on PDF. It's all on Patreon. Um, the diagonal method and all these exercises and then all my etudes, just so you know. Um, many of you already know that. Okay, so check this out. Root, one, three, five, six. Notice, notice if you're wondering, I'm just going one, three, five, six. You could do this, but I'm using the stretchy. And it's basically this sound, but I'm doing this. Okay. Oh, just to warn you, there might be an ad appearing as I'm approaching my hour. <laughs> they do that. I'll, I'll stay. I'll stay on this G6 arpeggio. G6. 
One, three, five, six. That's the formula. Diagonal method. Play the chord. G6. Play the arpeggio. Okay. And again, just to warn you, you might get an ad coming on your screen because I'm at the hour mark. They do that, apparently. Okay, so now let's minor it. We're going to go to the flat. We're going to flat the three. One flat three, six. Okay. Oh, I think they're inserting an ad. Did you guys get some ads? I'm kind of curious on what kind of ads they're advertising. <laughs> Hopefully it's for coffee. Good coffee. Did you guys get an ad? Type in the chat. Do you see an ad in your... No ads. It says on my screen that some of you may see an ad. Um, okay, so we just did the major six by doing this. Okay, thanks, Abe. Now we're gonna minor six it. So we got one flat three, five, six. Uh, you know, these are formulas, very, very important to know your chord formulas. And it might be new for you. Uh, <laughs> camping stuff. See, they know you well, Dave, right? Everybody gets personal ads, I think. That's funny. Camping stuff. Now I'm blazing through this. I have many etudes and my a lot of gypsy jazz stuff. You'll Okay, so I mean that's like my A2. If you want to, if you want to look it up, look at my A2 for a swing jeton. I'll type it in because I know not all of you are gypsy jazz players. Swing jeton A2, and I'll, it's called the diagonal, uh, di the diagonal method the A2. It's specifically going through the whole form of the song only with this diagonal method. You're gonna love it if you're into the kind of the high tech style that I'm demonstrating here right now. Going and it's just a good study in general. But going through your diagonal arpeggios through three octaves. Okay. Oh, fancy. Okay. No ads for you, Jamama. All right. So I'm going to continue on. We got the major six and the minor six. This is all off of G right now. And descend. Descending is harder than ascending. Swing it a little bit. G major six, ready? This is your practice. Descending. Minor six. G diminish. How many of you got that? Okay, I'm gonna stop there because I didn't walk you through the diminish yet, but I'm going to walk you through the diminish. I'm going to demonstrate a couple other things, and we'll end it for today's session. Give me a thumbs up if you like this. I really appreciate it. I'm going to try to do this as as if it grows. If it doesn't grow, then I'll go work out. Um, that's the tritone. This is such a good exercise. Tritone. That's root in the flat five. You can say sharp four, but... We just did this exercise on root five. Now I'm flatting the five. That's kind of a cool lick too. Listen to this. Okay, have fun with intervals and colors and sounds. It's not always about just scales and you know, playing up and down and whatnot scales, but colors and intervals. So what I'm having you do right now is to do the index finger, like Dave said, root, flat five, root, flat five. Careful here, gotta go two frets. Root, flat five. Okay, backwards. Do this. Okay, do that everywhere on any note. Get fast at that, okay? That's root, flat five, tritone. And you can do, you can do some pretty cool licks like this. See, this is always fun. Descending. It's kind of a 
dark and doomy, um, but it could be on an A sound. But that's not my point there, so I don't want to get too sidetracked with cool licks like that right now. But instead, I want you to do this. And now add on a minor third above it. And you're like, oh, that's just your diminished seven arpeggio. I hope you know that. But if not, this, you're going to love this. And I have a whole worksheet on the diagonal arpeggio system. It's all on Patreon. I'll put the link on here so that you can get it. I'll put it on there so that it's public and you can get it for free, even if you don't want to join me on Patreon, which I appreciate you joining me on Patreon. But I'll put that one worksheet on there for you. Root, flat fifth, root flat fifth octave system this is all how we're connecting it all together you sound like a pretty fancy player probably if you've never done this before then add on a minor third what's a minor third three frets okay one flat here's a formula there's a formula we can say one flat three one then flat five and then this one is a six but in theory books they would call it a double flat seven but it's just a six that's confusing i know and i didn't create that rule one flat three flat five double flat seven or six i call it a six so get used to me saying a six that was this little sequence there pretty fun stuff that's the diminished seven arpeggio there's multiple uses of the dim diminished seven so we've got this now check it out you guys major six minor six diminished seven major six slow this is now kind of what i do in my boot camp Etudes, my, specifically it's called Gypsy Jazz Bootcamp. A lot of this stuff in my etudes over songs. Minor six. Descending. Diminish seven. Swing it. Descending. Major six. Your turn. Ready? Minor six. Can you do it? Diminish seven. Abe, it might not take as long as you think if you do if you do my preliminary studies first and back to major six. I I get that a lot with students, but they're doing it very quickly. Minor six. And that's often my goal is to show you that you can do it if you do these little baby steps diminish seven you might just say hey i just want to do one octave and not go through three octaves that's what i recommend and that's what i have on my ats just major six this minor six diminish seven major six next octave major six Minor six. Dim seven. Major six. Next octave. Major six. Triplets. Dim. I don't know why I went to dim. I forgot minor six. Minor six. triplets whatnot you can have a lot of fun then you can go three octaves like i demonstrated but that's how i would recommend again there's watch this video rewind it if you didn't see the steps to get you there because i know you'll be able to do it okay but you'll also enjoy it maybe it's just staying in one octave diminish okay so much fun I'm going to leave you guys. This is a longer one today than I expected, but that's okay. Um, my private lessons is in for another two hours. Um, so let's go ahead. Now, when, now that we're going to do two hours, this is a good lesson here. I hope you're enjoying it. Give me a thumbs up if you're enjoying this lesson. I really appreciate it. It helps me out quite a bit, surprisingly, these the algorithm stuff on YouTube. Um, okay, and ready for a quick lick? <laughs> Here's a, here's a quick kind of a lick I, I could love to share. Um, it's using this method and using this whole um, intervallic 
idea again. This ties into everything. And it's this kind of a lick here. It's kind of, I, honestly, I would probably say it's like a Dorian lick, but it's one, two, flat three. And then five, six, flat seven. That's, those are six notes of the seven notes of a Dorian mode. So yeah, you, we can start to apply this to modes. You're going to love this topic. And it's going to open up the fretboard diagonally for you just by doing this method I'm talking about. But this is part of the Dorian mode. Scale, I call it scale fragments. There's a, a lot of worksheets again. So you get stuff like this. Is that cool? This notice my notice this finger. If you're wondering, how does Tracy do it so blazingly fast? Lots of coffee. Now joking. The root fifth, root fifth, root fifth. So easy. And then the intervals. This see that? It's a pattern. It's it's a symmetrical pattern too. This do the same thing here. You have, you have to watch my first finger. It's a magic trick. I'm just showing you the magic. Three octaves, just like that. So easy. As long as you can visualize where your fifth is and where your root is. Kind of bluesy. You could be. And now I was doing a dominant chord, but I did that lick. It's supposed to be minor, theoretically, but if you all know the blues, the blues is all about that minor third against the major third. That's another topic again. But this is just a little quick lick. And I have that notated as my quick lick series available on Patreon, some different ways of doing it. This is the diagonal way. And I do this little grace note, just to, if you want to get those little nuances. And then do here. So I kind of, instead of just doing this, I go. That's just what I like. I think it's kind of a little Pat Martino influence. Or Benson, you know, bluesy. You go da 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 da. Just a sweet lick. And you can do triplets. If you want to be a shredder. But um, those days are long gone. For me, I just want to play good music and soulful music and soulful meaning. You know, feel it. Feel each note that you play. That's why I say sing what you play too. I don't I want you to sing C9. That's what's so cool. Remember, any G minor lick can also be over C9. Or G minor. Okay. So again, just to show you this diagonal method, one more thing. That's, I promise I'm going to show you all my favorite stuff with diagonal method, but there's lots of etudes and worksheets. I mean, I am going to put the, the diagonal method Oh, it'll be linked to this later, so you gotta check back to grab the free PDF. It'll make it'll be a public PDF on Patreon, um, but do consider joining me on Patreon, please, to get all of all of my materials and bonus lessons. Um, I post every day, well over four thousand. Okay, there's one other. Oh, wow! Look at the thumbs up. I'm almost reaching my my goal. <laughs> if I see twenty, that's pretty awesome for today um, in one session. So come on, let's do it. Give me one more. Give me two more. Uh, Root third, five, seven. What's that arpeggio? One, three, five, seven. It's this G major seven. 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 That's going to be another topic later. Chord inversions, mastering your chord inversions all over the fretboard. But do this arpeggio with me, please, before we leave. One, three, five, seven. Beautiful. Oh, I made a dominant. This is a big stretch. So you're gonna do it slow. One, three. Don't don't flat your seven and get dominant. One, three, five, seven. It's symmetrical. One, three, five, seven. One, three, 
five seven. I'm gonna give myself a little E in the bass so I can hear the E minor nine. So beautiful. And that's a G major seven on top of E minor. This sound. You wanna go do this? G major seven. G major seven. G major seven. G major seven. These are just inversions. But I'm thinking G major seven arpeggio. We'll end it with that today, you guys. Hopefully that you enjoyed it. Give me a thumbs up before we leave here. Come on, two more. That's all I need, two more. Make my day. Um, thanks so much for joining in. We'll see you next time. Join me on Patreon. Come back, get the live. Um, well, hopefully I'll do this tomorrow morning before my series of lessons and happen. Um, it's a great time to work on some basic guitar stuff and get you going on what I feel are the essentials. Um, we'll see you all tomorrow or later this week. Take care. Have fun.